There's nothing in this world to keep you apart. What is your answer to him? Time after time, he's waited before, and now he is waiting again to see if you're willing, set to open the door, and oh how he wants to come in. you'll take one step toward the Savior, my friends, you'll find his arms open wide. Receive him and all of your darkness will end within your heart's heal abide oh time after time he is waiting before and now he is waiting again to see if you're willing to open the door. Said, oh, how he wants to, oh, how.
have two wonderful speakers this morning. Our first speaker is Tova Sophia Baira. And Sophia is a precocious eight-year-old who just completed the third grade. He attended Abundant Life Christian Academy from 2012 to 2014. Tova is compassionate and loves to tell others about Jesus. She has a heart of a servant. She is unselfish, very caring, and giving. And when she grows up, she wants to be a veterinarian and evangelist. Our next speaker is uh, Sister Tony T. Ellis. And Tony is, has just many gifts. And uh, we're honored to have her this morning. She is a, a motivator speaker. She works with youth. She has a Bachelor of Science and a Master's of Arts in Education. And I'm just going to say she has a, long, a book. It's in the insert. So if you take the time and read it. And so Tony would be our second speaker. And so I just uh, pray that every, we just pray with our speakers today because they, I believe they have a message that speaks to each one of us indiviz individually and collectively. So um, Tova, uh, just, well, just hold on just a second. You're going to get some help. We want the men to be men. Thank you, Isaac. You have got to, you have got to give it all for that one person, that tiny yet immensely important person. You have got to give it all. You have got to do it for that vulnerable, priceless, unique soul that is now yours because you have taken responsibility. You have got to do it. You have got to show it. All that is expected to make that one heart completely yours. You have got to show it. You have got to live it. Take that precious, irreplaceable heart and lead it through the trials of the unknown future. You have got to live it. Father, can you hear me? There is no one like you. Good morning and happy Sabbath. I don't need that one. I don't believe. I think I'm hot all over the place. First, I want to just say thank you, Tova, for that wonderful presentation. I really appreciate your confidence, your bravery, and your boldness in the Holy Ghost. Yes. Did we have a special music? Yes, and I forgot. That's okay. Just before Sister Ellis, we have special music by um, Mr. Jonathan. I forgot. Okay, yeah, you better. <laughs> I, I apologize. That's okay. This was a great Father's Day treat. I didn't know this guy was coming until I was in the middle of something yesterday. So uh, you have to seize these moments because they only come once in a while. But I praise God for my child. I love him to death. Jesus 
friends falling in love with my Jesus is the best thing I ever done. Falling in love with Jesus. Oh, falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus is the best. Thing I've ever, ever done. Oh, in his arms I feel protected. In his arms never disconnected. In his arms. I feel protected. There's no place I'd rather, rather be. Oh, yeah. In his arms, I feel protected. In his arms, never disconnected in his arms i feel protected there's no place i'd rather rather be oh, yeah. falling in love oh, yes, with jesus Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus is the best thing I've ever, ever done. In his arms, in his arms, in his arms. I feel protected in his arms, never disconnected in his arms. I feel protected. There's no place I'd rather, rather be. Said there's no place I'd rather, rather be, oh, rather be, Jesus. There's no place we'd rather, rather be. Thank that father and son duo for setting the atmosphere in this place. Because there is no place that I'd rather be than in the arms of Jesus. Hallelujah this morning. <laughs> well, it's afternoon now, but I promise I won't keep you long. I want to first thank God for keeping me thus far. I never knew I'd be here, standing here today before you for such a time as this. I want to thank the women's ministry leaders for making me their choice to deliver this word to you today. And all of the individuals who have organized this beautiful programming today. I want to thank Pastor Madden for sharing his pulpit with me. 
because that is not a light thing. You have to be very careful who you allow to feed the flock, especially when you have a calling on your life because he, the blood is on your hands if something is done wrong. So Pastor Madden, I thank you for getting to know me and still <laughs> getting to know be, me behind the scenes and still being okay with me being here. Amen. I want to thank my husband for encouraging me to pray about what God intends for me to say. <laughs> because as the old folks say down south, she liable to say anything. <laughs> and y'all know this about me. My visitors don't, but my home knows me. So I thank you for encouraging me to pray about that there. And um, there's another visitor that walked in, and I want him to stand today. He is Bishop Bill Thompson, William Thompson, from Hallelujah Praise Ministries. Please stay, stay standing, Bishop. Please stay up. And I want my stepfather, Frank Kennedy, to please stand up in the back. And all of you should know him, my mother's husband. These have been the fathers in my life from a little girl. I was five or six when I met you first, six years old. And Bishop has known me since I was 17. So he know all my dirt. <laughs> Even my daddy don't know all my dirt. So I want to just welcome you and say happy Father's Day to all of the fathers in the room. Thank you for standing, Bishop. When I was asked to deliver a message that honored men for Father's Day, I have to be honest with you. I truly struggled with the idea, not because I don't know honorable men, because I know plenty of them, but because of its correlation of honoring earthly fathers, since mine was not always honorable in his actions towards me. But I'm not here to share those dishonorable actions. But I had no clue of the bitterness I still harbored against men in general until asked to explore the concept of honoring men. By divine appointment, I am here to walk in deliverance and truly give honor where honor is due. Amen? In preparation for this message, I've grown to understand that the offenses of my dad were a direct result of his own personal struggles and the fight that with his flesh. So I've entitled this sermon, A Dad's Fight, A Father's Battle. A dad's fight, but a father's battle. Usually when I go in the community and I start out, I usually start out delivering a poem, a poetry piece. But here lately I've been invited to a lot of pulpits, even though this is my first time home. I like to set the atmosphere in a different way, to prepare myself to really deliver what God has in store. There's a movie that I enjoy watching, and it's called The Odd Life of Timothy Green. And this little boy, whenever the sun was out shining brightly, he would stand in the sun and he'd stretch his arms out wide and he'd lean into the light. Our Father God is the light. We must stand up and we must lean into the light sometimes to get the nourishment that we need. And I, well, let me not sometimes, all the time. So I just want to lean into the light and say, hallelujah, Lord. I thank you, God, for another day of life, health, strength, food, shelter, clothing, provision, God. I thank you for raising me up yet again to get it right today. So pray with me as I continue to, forward, to move forward. Um, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in God's sight. 
Amen. So turn with me to the scripture in the book of 2 Chronicles. Now, what you're going to need with you this morning is your word, because I don't have a PowerPoint. We're not going to do this the lazy way today. We're going to get back to the basics, and we're going to learn to where, where these books are found in the Bible. I bought my sword. I hope you brought yours today. 2 Chronicles, beginning at chapter 20, chapter 20, beginning with verse 14 and 15. You know it well. It's all been said before. It's actually part of my title today. When you found it, please tell me, amen. amen. That sounds like the majority of us, so I will proceed. Then the spirit of the Lord came upon Jehazel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, the son of Jael, the son of Mataniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, in the midst of the assembly. And he said, listen, all you of Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem and you, King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours. For the battle is not yours. The battle is not yours, but it's God's. And that's where I want to begin today. We honored our veterans a little bit earlier, um, for those of you that missed that. And we thank God that they all came home safely, some that were actually in battle from some of the history we saw this morning. They won the fight, and they still haven't lost the battle because the battle is already won. Amen? Sometimes our fathers, who are our dads, struggle with being who they can be because of the inherited issues of their fathers. To adequately understand the plight of the king, Jehoshaphat, we must first take a closer look at his dad. So let's turn to 2 Chronicles 16. 16, you should already be at Chronicles, just flip back a few, few chapters. 16, beginning at verses 7 through 10. When you have it, say amen, please. And at the time, Hanani, the seer, came to Asa, king of Judah, and said to him, because you have relied on the king of Syria and have not relied on the Lord your God, therefore the army of the king of Syria has escaped from your hand. Now, let me tell you, Asa had made a treaty. So his enemies wouldn't war against with him. He gave some riches to kind of bribe his way out of some stuff because he started becoming more fearful. You know how sometimes you're on the road so long, sometimes you're in the fight so long, you get weary, you get tired, and you start grasping at straws for how to win the fight. And he forgot his early experience of seeking God and started seeking his own way in doing things. And this was the result. Syria escaped his hand. Beginning at verse 8, were the Ethiopians and the Lidim not a huge army with very many chariots and horsemen? Yet because you re relied on the Lord, he delivered them into your hand. How many times have you forgotten how God has delivered you in the past? And here's someone reminding him there was a greater army than Syria's. And God brought you out of that. But you're so worried about the fight, you don't recognize the battle is already won. Moving on to nine, for the eyes of the Lord run to and fro. Please listen to this, dads. Please listen to this, because I know it gets hard. I know it gets hard. We live in Las Vegas, Nevada, and the attack in this town is great. It's great all over the planet, but this is a special kind of attack. This is a, a unique battlefield. So listen to this, for the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself what? Strong. Please say it out loud, to show himself what? Strong. 
We have a father who is strong. Strong. Get an image of that. He's strong. But it says his eyes are watching himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. In this you have done foolishly. Therefore, from now on, you shall have wars. When we stop seeking the will of God, that's where all the mess breaks out. When we forget how many times he's brought us through, that's when the stuff takes off. Now, the stuff is taking off in those that remember how good he's been every day, too. But they don't get affected by it. It's like walking through a fire and not getting burned. And you say, how does that happen? Because you haven't seen it. But we've seen it in the scripture. Y'all remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Those aren't fairy tales. This word is not a fairy tale. It's living. It's real. Let's take a look. Then Asa was angry with the seer. How many of y'all sucking y'all's teeth when the pastor say something that touch a nerve? Ouch. Ouch. I'm going to say ouch because I suck my teeth and roll my eyes sometimes. Like, really? Didn't I just tell y'all I didn't want to do this message? <laughs> well, not that I didn't want to do it, but I was thinking, wait a minute. How am I going to come with that there? But how many of you hear the word and because of how it was packaged, won't receive it. Some won't receive what Tony Ellis has to say today because they're looking at Tony Ellis saying it and not it coming from the, the Lord. He said his word will not return void. That's another reason I'm taking you to the word so you understand these are not my words, but they're the words of the Lord. Hallelujah. But he got mad with the seer and put him in prison for he was enraged at him because of this. And Asa oppressed some of the people at that time. So here is the issue that now Jehoshaphat has to deal with. He bribed his enemies with his wealth. He stopped relying on God for his deliverance. He oppressed the people due to his anger. And if you ask me, it was due to fear. Fear. Somebody say fear. 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 False evidence appearing real. That's all fear is. What you think. But it's not what you know. He became diseased in his feet. If you re read further in the scripture, at some point after all of these things, he became diseased in his feet. Now let's think about that for a minute. What can you do without your feet? Now we ain't talking about wheelchairs. We're not talking about all of the um, capabilities that we have today in technology to help us move around. We're talking about a day when they didn't have all of that. Okay? They didn't have all of these helps for them. And he is diseased at his feet. Why would he be diseased at his feet? Because his footsteps were foul. His footsteps were foul. Where he was walking was foul and he became diseased at his feet. Somebody say, ouch, my pinky toe. Huh? Y'all know what I'm talking about, ladies with wearing them cute shoes. <laughs> Your feet hurt, but it's nothing like diseased feet. <sighs> Did he go to God for his diseased feet? Now, Dr. Ellis is cool, but he don't know what God knows. He can't do what God does. He's practicing this thing. God is the creator of this thing. <laughs> What's that about? So instead of seeking God for his healing, he sought the physicians. And yes, you should go to the physician, but you better put God first. You better go to him first and say, God, which physician should I go to? Amen? Amen. Moving right along. His inherited issues, a closer look at the disease of the feet. His footsteps became foul, and therefore everywhere his feet took him, carried him further from God's will for his life. How have your dad's issues manifested madness for you along your journey? My dad's fight, his fight became mine. 
And eventually, <laughs> I gave it to my father. My dad's fight became mine, but I gave it back to my father. Because I learned it was his battle, not mine. Sometimes we have to be able to remove ourselves from these things that are killing us, yeah. that are distracting us, yeah. that are threatening our faith, that are con consuming us with bitterness and anger and frustration and confusion. And we can't make a decision here or there. We don't know what to do, up, down, left, right, because we don't recognize the battle is already won. Yeah. Amen? Amen? We've got to learn from our dad's mistakes. Jehosh <laughs> let me say his name right. Jehoshaphat begins to clean house when he becomes king. So, because daddy's diseases eventually took him out. Daddy died. Okay? Now, his son is coming in and taking it on. So he's learning from his dad's mistakes. Turn with me to 2 Chronicles 17 and let's see how Jehoshaphat decided to handle this thing. Again, that's Second Chronicles 17, verses 1 through 5. Then Jehoshaphat, his son, reigned in his place and strengthened himself against Israel. Now, he strengthened himself. He didn't go to the gym and work out. He didn't run in a marathon. You know, he didn't, you know, do anything particularly special in the area of physical strength but he started strengthening himself spiritually. And he placed troops in all the fortified cities of Judah and set garrisons in the land of Judah and in the cities of Ephraim, which Asa, his father, had taken. Now the Lord was with Jehoshaphat. Who was with him? Lord. Who was with Jehoshaphat? Lord. The Lord was with him. Because he walked in the former ways of his father David. He did not seek the bells. He did not seek the other idols. He did not go to a, a palm reader. He didn't call none of his friends and say, can you help a brother out? I don't know what to do about this here. Do you understand what I'm saying? He sought the will of God. He sought God, the God of his father, and walked in his commandments and not according to the acts of Israel. Therefore, the Lord established the kingdom in his hand, and all Judah gave presents to Jehoshaphat. And he had riches and honor in abundance. Riches and honor in abundance. People say, oh, well, you shouldn't be materialistic, be concerned. He was not concerned about anything material. But it showed up as a result of him putting his feet towards God. What? He walked in the will and the way of God. This is how it shows up. Riches, honor, and abundance were the result. Now listen, in, in the third year of his reign, he sent the leaders to teach all of Judah the law of the Lord. So once he learned this thing, he said, now, I own all of this stuff. So anybody in this house need to do what God says do. Because now we all got to line up, because y'all benefiting. You better line up. You're benefiting. So line up. So he sent people down there to teach the word of God. He sent missions, missionaries. Guess what it says here, though? The fear of the Lord fell on all the surrounding kingdoms. Now, check back in with me. Are you with me? Say, I'm with you, Tony. I'm with you, Tony. Listen, as he taught all of Judah, and all of the areas that he owned, all of the surrounding kingdoms were watching. And they said, hmm, something's going on over there. They got it good. We might as well do what they doing. And they started worshiping God. What? Really? You got to be a light in your home, a light in your neighborhood, a light in your community. A light in your city, a light in your state, a light in your nation, a light in this world. 
Go global with it. Let your light shine. Darkness has to get out when your light is shining bright. It must leave. It cannot. Come on now. If we turn all the lights out, it's a little bit dark. But guess what? There's some windows in here. Light. It permeates the darkness. It gets rid of it. Amen. Everybody say, breathe, Tony. I get to coughing up here and get too excited because I'm passionate about this thing. I'm not just the girl that sits in the back hollering hallelujah when the kids are up here singing that random lone voice in the darkness like Bishop was doing when they first started that praise. He's the man on KCEP <laughs> that says, great God, great God, great God, on Sunday morning. And he says, my beautiful, 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 beautiful wife. So I got that training from Bishop. He said, let the redeemed say so. I've been redeemed. I am imperfect. This is why I've been running around telling people, pray for me, pray for me, pray for me. Because something might come out of my mouth that God don't want. And I don't want it to be me. I need it to be all of him. My father said, rest on the word. You got this. Rest on the word. So the fear of the Lord fell on the surrounding kingdoms, and they did not make war with him. Some Philistines even gave him gifts. <laughs> he became increasingly powerful on land, and his, his, his mighty men of valor were like warriors to the nth degree. They had built this reputation, you see. So here was his daddy, right? But he learned from his daddy's mistakes. Just because you were born with a certain propensity to do a certain thing, a certain appetite, doesn't mean you have to give in to it. You control your thinking. You control your speaking. You control your doing. Control it. Control it. It is not an easy thing. I'm here to tell you we fall over and over and over again. But the point is get back up and take control. So moving on. In learning from his dad's mistakes, once he became the H-N-I-C, and that N stands for nobleman, because he was a king, when he became the head nobleman in charge, he first did what? He cleaned the house. Blessings come with obedience because promotion comes from who? The Bible tells us in Psalm 75, 6 and 7, it don't come from the north, it don't come from the south, it don't come from the east or the west. Promotion comes from God. So I'm standing here honoring you today, right? Because God said so. The promotion you're getting today ain't because Tony's doing it. <laughs> it's because God is giving you that thing, that honor. You can do this. Saved to save. Delivered to deliver. Educated to educate. Tell somebody, teach someone, pass the good news along. That's what he did when he finally got it together. He was like, you know what, I, I, I'm the king. I got to get this thing together. I got to do the right thing. So say he learned. He learned from his daddy's mistakes. Now the next thing you have to do is be able to discern distractions. You have to be able to discern their distractions. There will be things that come to threaten your reign. And they may look innocent initially. They may even look favorable initially. It may look like this is a blessing from the Lord initially. But we've got to get some discernment about us. Yoking unequally comes in many forms. Your friends, your places of employment, your club affiliations, sometimes even the church you belong to. You can be unequally yoked on so many different levels. It's not just about marriage. It's not just about marrying a Baptist marrying a Baptist, uh, SDA marrying SDA, uh, staying with your own kind. 
guess, guess what? You can't see the heart of a man. You can't see the heart of a woman. <laughs> this is why you got to consult God first. And then heed his voice when he tells you. <clears throat> Don't be hard-headed and say, well, Lord, you told me that there, but uh, um, listen, <coughs> I'm ready to do this thing. Please uh, let me, I'm thirsty. But whatever the issue is, you got to be able to discern a thing. So turn with me to 2 Chronicles 18. You may not even have to flip. We were just in 17. So <laughs> this is the funniest part of scripture that I have ever read in my life. Now, this might not be funny to you, but it's super funny to me. So we're going to take some time, and we're just going to dig through the word a little bit. Is that all right? Yeah. Can, can y'all handle that? Yeah. And if you go to sleep, oh, well, amen, you're tired. <laughs> but I'm, I'm getting ready to read this, because 18. Jehoshaphat had riches and honor and abundance. So we are highlighting first what he had, how he was established, what God had already blessed him with. And by marriage, somebody say marriage. marriage. By marriage, he allied himself with Ahab. After some years, he went down to visit Ahab. So he married into Ahab's family. After some years, he went down to visit Ahab in Samaria, and Ahab killed sheep and oxen in abundance for him and the people who were with him. He threw him a party and persuaded him to go with him to Ramoth Gilead. So Ahab, king of Israel, said to Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, will you go with me against Ramoth Gilead? Now, here's what I'm talking about. Discern a thing. He said, I am as you are, and my people as your people. We will be with you in the war. He's saying, look, I'm married into your family. I love you. I I'm here to support you, whatever you need. So also Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, now even though he said, I'm with you, but I'm going to need you <laughs> to do what I do now. You asking something of me, I'm asking something of you. He says, please inquire for the word of the Lord today. Now how many of you, when your friends tell you to come on, let's come do something or help me out, how many of you put some prayer on it? How many of you seek God? before you do that thing, or you just jump on. Oh, yeah, I'm a ride or die. I'll, I'll roll with you for life. Man, you my boy, man. But here he's saying, let's pause the button real quick, and I want you to put some prayer on it. Then the king of Israel gathered the prophets together. Now, did he go to God? Did he go to God? No. Who did, it, who did they say he went to? The prophets. Now, listen. Then the king of Israel gathered the prophets together. How many prophets were there? That's a lot of prophets in one place. <laughs> really? 400 men and said to them, shall we go to war against Ramoth Gilead or shall I refrain? So they said, go up, for God will deliver it into the king's hand. But Jehoshaphat, being able to discern a thing, said, is there not still a prophet of the Lord? here that we may inquire of him. He's like, yeah, okay, that's good, dude, but what about somebody that knows the Lord? <laughs> Can we talk to him uh, or her? Okay, so the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, there is still one man by whom we may inquire of the Lord, but I hate him. <laughs> but I hate him because he never prophesies good concerning me, but always evil. He is Micaiah, the son of Imla. And Jehoshaphat said, let not the king say such things. Like, dude, how you saying you hate somebody who is a prophet of the Lord who can actually help you with this thing here? Really? You hate him? Okay. It gets funnier. <laughs> then the king of Israel called one of his officers and said, bring Micaiah, the son of Imla, quickly. He mad now, okay? The king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, clothed in their robes, sat each one 
on his throne, and they sat at a threshing floor at the entrance of the gate of Samaria, and all the prophets prophesied before them. Now Zedekiah, the son of Chanana, I can't say all these names, had made horns of iron for himself, and he said, Thus says the Lord, with these you shall gore the Syrians until they are destroyed. And all the prophets prophesied, so saying, go up to Ramoth, Gilead, and prosper, for the Lord will deliver it into the king's hands. Then the messenger who had gone to call Micaiah spoke to him, saying, now listen, the words of the prophets with one accord encourage the king. Therefore, please let your word be like the word of one of them and speak encouragement. He's saying, I know, I know you, you know, you got a job to do for the Lord, but could you just come and just say what the rest of the prophets said? And Micaiah said, as the Lord lives, whatever my God says, that will I speak. Then he came to the king, and the king said to him, Micaiah, shall we go to war against Ramoth Gilead, or shall I refrain? And he said, go and prosper, and they shall be delivered into your hand. So the king said to him, how many times shall I make you swear that you tell me nothing but the truth in the name of the Lord? Because like, this is the first time you ever heard something good. He's like, oh, swear, swear if you're telling the truth, man. For real? I, I'm going to win? Then he said, I saw all Israel scattered on the mountains as sheep that have no shepherd. And the Lord said, these have no master. Let each return to his house in peace. And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, did I not tell you he would not prophesy good concerning me but evil? Listen, but then Micaiah said, therefore, hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne and all the hosts of heaven standing on his right hand and his left. And the Lord said, who will persuade Ahab, king of Israel, to go up that he may fall at Ramoth Gilead? He said, who will persuade him to go up there and, and, and get killed? Listen. <clears throat> so one spoke in this manner and another spoke in that manner then a spirit came forward and stood before the lord and said i will persuade him the lord said to him in what way so he said i will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets and the lord said you shall persuade him and also prevail go out and do so therefore look the Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouth of these prophets of yours, and the Lord has declared disaster against you. Then Zedekiah, the son of um, Ch 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 okay, Chenna, went near and struck Micaiah on the cheek and said, which way did the spirit from the Lord go from to speak to you? And Micaiah said, indeed, you shall see on that day when you go into an inner chamber to hide. So he's, he's telling him, you're going to die. You're going up there, you're not going to win. Well, here's the point I'm making up. Before I read all of this, because I'm, I'm getting tired of reading. And I read the whole thing, and it was hilarious. Sometimes we get so desperate that we will connect ourselves to foul spirits. Now here, Jehoshaphat was not desperate. He was friendly, okay? He was friendly. But Ahab was desperate. So some of your friends may start out okay. You I mean you married into that family, but now they see all that you got and all that you can get for them to help them get into certain places. So they'll come to you because they know you got a good heart. They went to Jehoshaphat because they knew he had a good heart. Somebody wants to reign like you are reigning. Someone wants your spot. And it's not because of you. They have no clue that he said, when I be lifted up, all men will be drawn unto me. You so busy. Tony's so talented. This person is so gifted. That person, every good and perfect gift comes from the Father of light. It's not them. It's just a vessel. Just a vessel. What ended up happening is Jehoshaphat went in his, his kingly robes because Ahab said, you dress like a king, but I'm going to go up here and I'm going I'm to I'm hide. I'm going to conceal myself. You get out front. You do that. And so what he really wanted him to do was be the one to fall. He wanted to be. And so when they got close enough to see that Jehoshaphat was in the robes, remember the surrounding kingdoms 
now knew who King Jehoshaphat was. His reputation preceded him. So when they saw that it wasn't Ahab, they started running, just like the prophet said they would. They got scattered. No one could lead them into that battle. No one could lead them to fight against God's man. But he got scared, and Jehoshaphat, you know, he had to get out of there. But your boy went to go hide, to conceal himself, to do some dirt. And so someone was bold enough to shoot a random arrow that ended up in Ahab. You're so busy fighting, you don't know the battle is already won. Amen? Let's move on. You got to avoid the double Ds, the distractions and the diversions threatening to derail your destiny. Avoid the double Ds. Who in your circle of affiliations is threatening to defeat you in your walk with the Lord? You honorable men today, you beautiful women today. Some disguised as loyal royals can put you in harm's way, not because they want to destroy you, but someone you can get them close to. Do you, did you hear me? Not because they want to destroy you, but someone you can get them close enough to, to destroy. Don't be a pawn. Don't get caught in the middle of a fight that isn't even yours. Remember your father has a way of leveling the battlefield. Amen? Amen. We've got to get back to the basics. Old enemies resurface due to alliances with the wicked. Sometimes, you know, you and your enemies make peace and it's all good, but then they see you with somebody following, they say, well, I thought they were, they were changed. They were different. They were running things a little differently than their daddy. But they still dealing with this dirt over here. Do you hear me? So now his old enemies are now coming, becoming new again. So turn with me to 2 Chronicles 19. And we're just going to look at verse 1 and 2. Then Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, returned safely to his house in Jerusalem. And Jehu, the son of Hanani, the seer, went out to meet him and said to King Jehoshaphat, Should you help the wicked and love those who hate the Lord? Therefore, the wrath of the Lord is upon you. So because of his affiliation, now the wrath of the Lord is upon him. But, but the thing is, God did not forget what he'd already accomplished. God has not forgotten him. He's just saying now there, there's consequences. There's consequences for your affiliations that aren't right. There's always consequences. They don't mean as unto death, but there's consequences. Amen? So what did he do? He got back to the basics. He returned to the diligence of seeking God's will and pouring into the people. He rallied the government this time. <laughs> he wasn't just thinking about teachers. Now he started talking to the government about God's will. And he told them to fear the Lord. Don't be partial. All the judges, he spoke to the judges and said, don't take bribes. You guys got to be honest. You are in this land doing work for this land. I own this house. We got to get it together. So he became more diligent. Dads, you must fight with the faith in God. He will win the battles. Okay? Get back to the basics. When war is imminent, and it is, the devil doesn't have any new tricks. They're all old. He is a created being, and he can only work within his creative abilities. So he don't do nothing new. He is a mimicker of some stuff. Okay? He's fake. This is why I don't believe in faking it until you make it. The, I, if I'm, I'm look, look, now faith. So I say faith it until you wake it, because it's in you. Don't fake it. Faith it. So when war is imminent, basic training is in order. Seek the Lord. Proclaim a fast. Gather and pray. This is all that he did in um, chapter 19, okay? Reflect on what God has already done. Remind yourself of the victories already won. Everybody say, I'm a winner. I'm a winner. I have overcome sicknesses, yeah. comas, yeah. cancer. Divorce. Do you understand you are a winner? Act like
like you know. Huh. Reflect on what God has already done, but don't doubt. Bishop say, doubt, he said, what's the first two letters in doubt? Do, it's D-O, spells do. He said, what's the third letter in doubt? You, and then he say that B, tripping. Do you be tripping? <laughs> That's doubt. That's how he broke the scripture down to me to get me to understand it better. Do you be tripping? That's doubt. And have no fear. Second Chronicles 2012. Let's look at Second Chronicles 2012. After you have sought the Lord, proclaimed a fast, gathered and prayed, reflected on what God has already done, and you remove the doubt and the fear, that's the last four. That's, that's, that's the last thing you have to do. That's the last frontier. So 2012, our, oh, our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us, nor do we know what to do but our eyes are upon you. Now, he, he got a little bit afraid, but he said, but I'm going to give it back to you, God. I'm going to put my eyes on you, because what I can't see, you can see. So I'm going to follow you as you lead. Amen? Amen? Sometimes we have to get in that position of being blind. Get in the position of being led by our shepherd. Amen? Amen. Bow before him and worship him. Rise up, believe, prepare to fight, but watch God win. Put your eyes on him because the battle is won. <laughs> my dad's fight. When I consider the wars that my dad fought in his journey through life, I'm reminded that in the end, he surrendered to the fact that his heavenly father had already won the battle. I'm going to read a little bit of the final days that I had with my father before he succumbed to his fight with cancer. Some 36 years after the destruction of my two-parent home, I had the opportunity to bid my father farewell during his transition from life to death. I refused to allow our jaded past to keep me from gaining true closure regarding our relationship. For six short days, we enjoyed each other's company. By participating in the simple things in life, we shared a meatball sandwich. He requested a tailor-made salad, and I happily wiped his chin as he inevitably dropped more in his lap than he placed in his mouth. We sat on the porch of the convalescent home where he resided, and people watched. We laughed together as we witnessed the older residents who suffered from dementia attempt to escape the lonely jail of convalescence. Not that this scenario was funny, but we made light of an otherwise seriously depressing environment. I baked his favorite cookies and watched him demolish them one by one. I read aloud as he listened intently to my first published book. He was proud of my accomplishment and I was glad he lived to witness it. I sang him songs. When tucking him in for the night, he held my hand as he writhed in pain while we waited for the nurses to relieve it with meds. Our time was well spent. For a brief moment in time, my father and I enjoyed an even exchange of a healthy father-daughter relationship. On the second day of my visit, my father was waiting patiently on the porch of the facility. As I approached his electric wheelchair, I noticed his smiling face was full of tears. My father was crying, and I thought he may be in physical pain, but his heart was full of joy. This was evident in his response regarding my question as to why he was crying. He whispered, I thought this would be more difficult. Further discussion revealed that he had anticipated my visit would be hard for both of us due to the nature of his offenses toward me. What he had not counted on was that I had truly forgiven him and wished to help him experience closure. Listen, when people hurt you, it's usually because they're hurting. 
It's usually because they're broken in some way and they don't know how to give you what you need. Our fathers are only human. Our daddies are only men. They can only fight. They cannot win the battle. They can only fight. They cannot win the battle. Daddy lost his fight with cancer in 2012, but the battle for his soul was won by my heavenly father. Because as I watched his little body, and he was so tiny, he just looked like a little baby to me. And I, I just felt so bad. And he would say, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Sometimes the pain would just be so unbearable. He would just wince and, and cry, and then he would wake up and say, yes, Lord. He would fuck his eyes. Yes, Lord, I hear you, Lord. Yes, Lord. And I'm so thankful I had the opportunity to tell him I love him, to tell him I forgive him, to tell him that I understand he's only human. You may be fighting what seems to be a losing battle at this very moment in your life, on your job, in your home, in your mind. <laughs> There's a battlefield in your mind. That's where it all begins. You may be battling something in your body and in your spirit. Don't give up the fight. Just recognize your Heavenly Father has already won the battle. Though it was my dad's fight, it was my father's battle. And his son Jesus is the only casualty of war. But he rose again. Amen. Truly, this has been a touching message. And I want to thank you, Sister Tony, for just allowing us into your life. I believe that, you know, God, he lives out of time. He created time, but he is not governed by time. But each and every one of us, God has placed us significantly wherever he wants to in time. And the message that we have heard this morning, this afternoon, the individuals that have made a difference in your life, whether it be a bishop, whether it be a stepfather, whether it be a father that may have started off on the wrong path, but one of the things that I've learned from your message, Sister Tony, it is not how you start, but it's how you finish. And you know, we serve a God that he specializes in strong finishes. Amen? And so we may have tripped and fall. We may have done bad things in the past. But praise God, we serve a God that wants us to finish strong. Amen? Amen? And so today, right now, you've heard the word of God. We've heard 2 Chronicles. We have seen in 2 Chronicles chapter 17, chapter 16, we've seen truly the battle is not, is, is not ours. We've seen that it is the Lord. Amen? We've heard truly that we have a strong God. Yes, men, we may fight in the battle, but we will not win it. We serve a God that wins all the time. Amen? And uh, we want to thank God even as God led in Tony's father's life. He may have had a weak start, but we want to praise God in 2012 that he finished strong in the Lord. Amen? And so when we think of Jehoshaphat and his battle and his association 
and him almost losing the battle. But praise God, there is a God that stands tall, that helped him to be victorious. Amen? Amen? We know that we need to discern the distractions of life. And we have to understand that promotion comes only from God. Amen? Amen. And I believe God is in the promoting business and he want to promote someone here today. How is your walk with God? Folks, every single one of us, did not our hearts burn within us when we heard the words? Amen. This is not a religion thing. This is not a, a, a name recognition thing. This is a God thing. I believe God is calling us right now into a purpose. Many of us, we slant on a legalistic side or on a liberal side or we're into the women thing or whatever. But it's about a God thing. And I believe God is calling us, every single one of us, into purpose. Amen? Amen. This morning, this afternoon, I want to end. And I want to take too long. The spirit of the Lord that is breathing in your nostril right now. I believe there's a call upon your life. He wants to call you out, and he wants you to stand for a mission. And so today, if you have determined in your life that the Lord has spoken to you in some way, and you just want to say, Lord, please, I may have started off wrong, but I want to finish strong. If this is your desire, I'm going to ask you to stand with me. I'm going to ask you to stand with me. I'm standing. I'm the first one standing. Now, folks, I know that God, he has some things to do and to finish in your life. Amen? And we want him to finish it. The Lord who has begun a good work in your life, he is faithful to complete it unto the very, very end. Amen? First of all, I want to ask Sister Tony to come forward. I want you to join us here. I want you to join us here. We want to pray for you. We want to pray for God's anointing. I'm going to ask the elders of the church to join us. Pastor Palmer, join us, please. Bishop, join us. Your stepdad, join us significant individuals in your life. I believe that there's a calling upon this lady's life. Amen? Amen. And I truly believe God has great things in store for you. Amen? Just step forward, please. Step forward. Come on, give God some praise in this house. Come on, give him a little praise in the house. I dare you to praise him. I dare you to praise him. I dare you to magnify him, glorify him, exalt his name. Oh, Lord, what a, what, what a moving, moving service. Glory to your name, God. Glory to your name, God. Bless the Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And God, we'll go away from this house of prayer today. The soldiers will leave today, God, praising and magnifying and glorifying your name. Because you're so worthy. You're so worthy to be praised. Teach us the value of you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for her. Now, God, from the top of her head, all the way to her feet, in the name of Jesus, glory to your name, God. Open up doors for her, Lord. Give her more stuff to write, Lord. In the name of Jesus, touch your mind. 
Touch your emotions. Touch your will. God touch every cell in her body. All 100 trillion cells. All one trillion atoms in each cell. Let everybody get on the cell phone. And touch and love. And not only her God, but everybody in this place. In the name of Jesus. And God, we tell it. Everywhere we go. God, let us live like this is our last moment on earth. Sculpt you in every sentence. Sculpt you in every word. And I thank you. And I praise you. And I magnify you. And I thank you for the spirit in this place. I thank you for the spirit in this place. I thank you for the spirit in this place. In the name of Jesus. As the choir said, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Thank you, God. I thank you for the leader of this house, this pastor, for allowing this word to go forth. Bless him in the name of Jesus. And we love you and praise you. Magnify you. Glorify you in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. As we remain standing here, I want to invite Tamara, my sister. I want you to come forward. Now, I think that this message in some way has been touching to my sister um, because we come right